God okay. didn't want it, didn't give you the law to send you to hell. Mm -hmm. We were on our way to hell mm -hmm. because of what happened in the Garden of Eden. But what we've done is saying, if you break the law, then you're going to hell. Friend, you were born with that sin nature. It, is, it was never the law that sent people to hell. The law was mainly there, just as the law is here in our society today, to give this is what we agree we need to do to be able to prosper in our community, that we need to follow this law. And are there lawbreakers? Sure there are. Yeah. And there are consequences consequences to law breaking. Mm -hmm. That's the problem with the whole, I'm under grace, not under the law. You're under grace and under the law. Mm -hmm. You operate according to the law, but you operate with grace that gives you the ability to not only fulfill the law, but to walk in the prosperity of that. <gasps> So, uh, something happened last night. Yeah? What took place? I almost knocked out my front tooth. All you wanted for Christmas then would be your two front teeth, right? Yeah, I showed up early <laughs> to the party. If you could see on video, I have a, a little brace on my mouth now. Well, uh, why was, didn't you get your mouth out of the way? Yeah. Uh, oh, man. I, I, I didn't even realize what was coming for me. Uh, I, uh, we were playing basketball. And I had a guy go down the lane and did a Euro step on me and ripped through with his elbow and clocked me right in my front tooth. Immediately, I like I put my hand in my mouth because I was like, I lost my tooth. Like my front tooth is wiggly. Like that's only so you only get excited when you're a kid because you get yeah, money right. now. I'm like, <laughs> you ain't getting oh money. Oh my goodness. Not for, <laughs> oh my goodness. It's going to cost you money for yeah, that. It costs you a whole lot. And so I'm like stressing out. I don't even think I talked to anybody. I just like ran out the door and I don't know where to go. I, sh I showed up at the ER. I'm like, this is not like a huge deal. You just <laughs> ran out the door. <laughs> They're all watching you and you just take off. I was like, I don't know. I'm like, I'm thinking, I'm like, do I put, the, I'm like, it hasn't fallen out yet, but do I, rip it out, put it in milk. I'm like, I don't know the protocol and I know I need to act fast. <laughs> and so I just left without talking to anybody. And, uh, I can you see, you look like Napoleon dynamite just taking out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> man, my face is bleeding. <laughs> and, yeah. Come to find out though. I actually, this morning had an appointment. I broke my bone, whatever it is. He, he showed me the x-ray. It's like the size of a credit card in my face, connected my tooth. And so it created this big gap on my, my front teeth, like my, my front right tooth. And uh, so he just had to push it back up into place, which that felt really fun, and then put uh, a wire around it. And now I can't eat solid food for eight weeks until it all heals. So, And you can't talk trash either then. No. That's what you get for talking trash with those mm -hmm. guys. I got mouthed. He said, though, <laughs> if I would have, here's the grace of God right here. I was super excited about this. One, I didn't lose my tooth. Two, um, he said, if I would have had my mouth closed, that I would have split my lip in half and it would have had permanent damage. So good thing you kept your mouth open. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my mom always said I need to keep my mouth shut. But <laughs> yeah, she was wrong. <laughs> that was the... <laughs> so what are uh, we talking about today? We, um, we were, we were talking about, I know like the conversation always, and a lot of times it's either with people that are just new to the faith and they're like, their goal is to please God. And so a lot of the things in their former life, they're like, is this wrong now? Do I, can I do this? And then there's the other heart of it where it's legalism for people that want to claim the banner of Christ, but they still want to do everything. Um, you know, what's interesting is when somebody is an unbeliever yeah. and they come to Christ, they tend to want to get away, like, like something in them mm -hmm. causes them to want to like cast off everything of that old way of living. Yeah. I think the people who struggle the most with thinking, well, I'm under grace. Yeah. I'm not under the law, which is a common statement. Yeah. And we're going to talk about that today a little bit are usually people who've been brought up in the church hmm. that have been told you can't do all of these things. And and they get older and they're like, well, I can do all of these things and still be saved. Hmm. And, and it really calls out in them that the re only reason they weren't doing it is because they felt like they were told, you, if you're going to be a Christian and go to heaven, you can't do these things. Yeah. And <clears throat> grace 
is an incredible thing because we're imperfect and we fall and we break the law. And grace says that God took our sin on the cross. Interesting, it doesn't say God took your, the law on the cross. Hmm. God took our sin when we break the law. Mm -hmm. He took that on the cross and uh, paid for it all so that we could have his perfection and righteousness. In Christ, it's, 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 a, it's a conflict between a lot of people. Uh, should we abide by the law? Should we not? Well, the Bible is clear that Christ wrote the law on our, our hearts. hearts. He said, I didn't come to abolish the law, but to fulfill mm -hmm. the law. And, and I guess when you have people who make the statement, I'm under grace, mm -hmm. not under the law, the next question I would have is, so do you believe that grace gives you permission to be lawless? Yeah. Because we're living in a society today where Christians have said, I'm under, the, I'm under grace, I'm mm -hmm. not under the law, which then says, I can be lawless. Yeah. And yeah. we're in a society that has become more lawless. Same thing. Where we look at people who break the law mm -hmm. and we say, let them off the hook. D don't, they, they don't need to pay for the law because, because there is no reason. They shouldn't, and, and it increases lawlessness uh, in, uh, in our world today. Now, grace does not cause us to be more lawless. If we're under mm -hmm. grace, it doesn't cause us to be lawless. Mm -hmm. It causes us to be able to fulfill the law just as Christ law just as Christ did. Yeah. Grace gives us the ability to fulfill the law. Yeah, grace is not a, a cop out to to go and continue to sin and, and Paul talks about that because we're under grace. So it's like sh because should we sin that grace may abound. Let's just keep on sinning right. and keep cashing the check of grace to see when this bank account runs empty. Should we just keep doing that? And he says, by no means. And the true heart of a follower of Christ is Jesus even says that himself. Like, if you love me, you'll do it as I command you. Yeah, you'll yeah. keep my commandments. And uh, I think people have either they don't understand the sacrifice that was made. It's, it's like, um, you know, you ever heard of like survivor's guilt? Yeah. Oh yeah. So there's like, it's usually like in the military, you hear about that. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, one guy from, I don't know what you call it, like a team or a squad, battalion, yeah, battalion. somehow yeah. he's the only one that survives and then feels this guilt. Like, why me? How come I was worth you know, having life and, and my brothers weren't, or whether a kid was, um, like sur survived and his, and his siblings died in a car crash, whatever it may be. There's, there's this expectation that I better make my life count. Or if someone gave their life for me, I need to make my life count because they're right. They, they were, they gave up theirs. So I like, there's some purpose behind that and there's some guilt. And I think that, you know, what Jesus did on the cross is not to provide survival's, survivor's guilt for us. But if you truly understand and actually believe the sacrifice that he made for you on that cross, that's what changes everything. That's what changed it for me. Because it was like, once I actually understood that this was real, I'd grown up with it. I knew about it. But once I understood that this sacrifice was for me too, and I, I couldn't just continue living the way I was living because if this is true, that changes everything. Yeah, I mean, okay, so he puts, he writes the commandments on your heart, yeah. right? Which is really talking to one thing. It's your desire. Hmm. You're going to do what you want to do. Exactly. So when someone says, I really want to pray more. Hmm. No, you don't. You don't want to pray more. Because if you wanted to pray more, you would. Yeah. You do what you want to do. Mm -hmm. In the end, that's why dieting is so hard. You want to eat that thing. There's a, a desire. To, yeah, you're, but you want to eat it, so you do it. We do what our heart desires, and yeah. we fight those desires in order to do what's our. This is the biggest thing, I think, and I was just in Israel. Yeah. And um, we had a Jewish guide who was great, not a Christian, but a Jewish guide, and he was great. And he talked about how the Sabbath, uh, and on the Sabbath, just so that they don't break the Sabbath, they make the rules. They have laws in Israel on the Sabbath. 
that you can't even push the elevator button because you'd be breaking the Sabbath. So when you go in, they have what's called the Sabbath elevators where you wait, the door opens, you walk into the elevator, and then it stops at every floor hmm. so that you don't have to push a button because wow. that would be breaking the Sabbath. And I brought that up to him, and he says, well, okay, it seems extreme, but if we go extreme, then we know we won't be at risk <clears throat> of breaking the actual law. And the thing I really begin to realize is there, there are a lot of people who believe we were created to keep the law. Hmm. Like we were created for the law. Yeah. And Jesus was telling them something totally different. He was saying the law was really created for you. Hmm. So there is over 600 laws that were in the Old Testament. And there are people saying, so you're saying we can't eat this kind of food or we can't, we got to wash our hands in this manner or we got to do. No, see, that's the thing that I think uh, human do God told them hey you're going into the wilderness it might be a good idea to wash your hands yeah they had no idea about germs they had no idea that that we didn't understand that until the 19th century what germs were so if that's the case he's basically giving them a law that they keep to protect them the law was for them. Now we know what germs are. We understand why we wash our hands. And if you do or you don't, the effect it may or may not have in our life is neither here nor there. But we understand why we, we would wash our hands. So there are laws in the Bible. The laws weren't there that we, we have to be stringent in keeping every single law. The laws were there for us in order to have a life that could prosper. You know, you can, you know I've said this many times. Well, I'm under grace. I'm not under the law. And, and so you go out, you get mad at someone, you kill them. Hmm. The cop comes to your house and you say, the cop says, okay, you're going to prison. Oh, no, 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 sir. You don't understand. I've invited Christ in my life. I'm under grace. I'm not under the law. I know that in any normal situation, you would want to put me in prison for murder. But in this situation, I'm under grace. I, I'm, I'm able to be lawless. I, there, are, there are laws. You're going to prison. Yep. And your life's not going to be as great as it would be outside of prison as it is when you're in. So you have to recognize the fact that when we came to Christ, he gave us grace, unmerited favor. But he also says, I'm going to write that on your heart and give you the ability to fulfill the law in your life. We need the structure and boundaries of the law in our life. Yeah, isn't there a verse in the Bible? What's that verse where it talks about... Uh, I was talking about the true Jews, like the true chosen people of God, and it wouldn't be by circumcision, but circumcision of the right, heart. Right. Isn't that interesting? Right. Like the true, like we're grafted into the family of God, not because of our ethnicity, but because our belief, just like Abraham was made righteous by his belief at the promise God made him and God considered him righteous because of that belief in the same way we believe in our hearts and Christ that changes. There's some, there's some work that goes on. That's why like we always, we talk about this a lot, but it's more than just like, God's not waiting for you to be like, you're not going to get to heaven. And you're going to be like, Oh, you knew I was here. Sweet. Like, okay. Um, Step on in. Sweet. You knew I was here like the Easter bunny or something right. like I'm, I'm here. Surprise. Like you knew like that, that's not what that's not what this belief is about. It's not some Santa Claus that just right. like in the movie Elf where the guy's flying his sleigh and the, the sleigh can only fly if the people believe in Santa Claus. And right. so he crashes right. because the people didn't believe in him. That's not how God so operates. So we got to sing a carol to get them to believe more. Exactly. <laughs> like we have such like a weird perspective. Well, like you, you look at creation, for instance. We all recognize that creation was created based on laws. Yeah. No one argues the law of gravity. We all know it exists. Yeah. No, no one argues with the laws that are proven to the point where we're even trying to make theories. We try to consider theories that are not proven to be laws. We all recognize that creation is governed mm -hmm. by laws, that yeah. when God created everything, he created it, and, in, and in it operates based on laws. Those laws cause it to operate. And, and in, in law-abiding countries, you see prosperity. 
in countries where they don't abide by the law, and I've been to many third world countries that ignore the law, they don't abide by the law, and there is no prosperity. Then when we come to the laws of our own life, we think, oh, praise God, Jesus has set me free from any laws. I don't need to fulfill them. I can, I can do all of these things, and I can go to heaven because of grace. And yeah, I agree. That the Bible says, Paul says, who's bewitched you? Sure, we fall. But the reality is that if if you don't allow the laws that God has given, it's like God didn't create the laws to keep you out of heaven. God <laughs> gave you the laws to have prosperity on earth. And this is another interesting thing. You know, God, God wasn't the one that initially gave the laws. The people of Israel asked for the laws. That is true. They asked what is it? They wanted direction. They asked for God to give them to them. And, and the created, God did not give Adam and Eve laws. No. He wanted relationship yeah. with them. But they wanted, what do we need to do to follow God? And God said, really, just follow me. I want to be your God. You'll be my people. But mm -hmm. people didn't know <laughs> what it was to be a follower of God. And so he said, These are, this is who we are. This is our culture. This is our identity. The laws really identified who they were as a culture. We're people who love people. We're mm -hmm. people who honor women. Up to that time, women were mistreated, mm -hmm. really. It wasn't until Jesus that women really were given uh, honor. It's, it's incredible how, how um, in our society... Uh, people are trying to redefine who Christians are. Yeah. And and I think that's because Christians have lost their identity because we ignore the laws and, yeah. and the importance of them in our life. The interesting thing is, uh, in Numbers 31, 16, we talked about this in our small group campaign, Legends. And um, when Balaam, there's this, I guess you describe a little bit about Balaam was, and I'll describe my next point. So tell us a little bit about what I'm talking about in our small group series on what Balaam was trying to do when a king approached him and was trying to defeat his foe and used Balaam. What, what was Balaam doing? Well, <coughs> well Balaam was um, someone who would curse and bless. Mm -hmm. And Balak wanted the Israelites cursed. Mm -hmm. And he went to God and God said, don't do it, Balaam. Yep. And Balaam was like, yeah, but I really want something from this. You know, he's going to give me power and money and he's going to give me the things. So he says, I can't do it. He went back and said, God told me I can't do it. Yeah. And, and it wasn't he, like God was trying to protect him, but he, he wanted to blame God for not mm -hmm. doing it. And then later looked for a way mm -hmm. to get uh, to get that thing he wanted from Balak. And at the end, after being told numerous times, no, you cannot curse these people, Balaam then goes back to Balak and says, if you want to defeat them, get them to become lawless, essentially. Get them to yeah. intermarry. Get them to do what they know they should not do, mm -hmm. and it will cause them to fall. Exactly. So he won he couldn't speak a word he couldn't use his gifting to speak curses over this people because papa says no and so he's like well he he made a workaround because he still wanted that that gift that the king was going to give him if he were to help him defeat his enemy israel in numbers 31:16 the way to defeat them was this, they were the ones who followed Balaam's advice and enticed the Israelites to be unfaithful to the Lord in the pure incident, uh, so that a plague struck the Lord's people. Yeah. That was the only way to defeat them. Was to get them to open the door. What, to what, and, that, and that really is the story. Mm -hmm. but most of the stuff, there isn't anything the enemy can do to us unless we open the door. Mm. So then what is the danger of this? Hmm. The danger is there are going to be people listening that go, man, that, that guy is legalistic. Yeah. Like, can you believe how legalistic they are? Just that statement identifies the ignorance of the person who says that. Yeah. This has nothing to do with legalism. Legalism, again, it comes back to we were not created for the law. The law was created for us. Yeah. So in as much as we honor and walk according to the law 
and, and I'm talking about the laws that really apply to today. Mm -hmm. um, there's a number of them from that day that don't apply to that day. Mm -hmm. And a number of the laws that God gave Moses were interpreted in a way that God never gave them. They make no sense. And so there's this human effect on some of those laws as well. And you see that today as well when you're in Israel, when you, you can't go in an elevator and push a button because you'll break the to Sabbath. To the furthest extent. Yeah, to the extreme. First Timothy 1 Timothy 1.9 says, Understanding this, that the law is not laid down for the just, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and sinners, for the unholy and profane. This explains the difference between a correct application of the law versus an illegal use of it. Paul's point is that the law is meant to make us aware of our sin, not to drive us into legalism. Uh, the commandment showing how the law is meant to convict such people of sin as a means to explain the gospel of Christ. Yeah. The interesting in Galatians, what we're going to talk about here. Well, and, and the law, what does the law do? It yeah. serves as a path. Well, so what I was getting at, even the era, when we were in uh, Israel, we were talking with um, an Old Testament professor who was there with us, mm -hmm. and he said something that I thought was incredible. He said, you, have you ever considered what the Old Testament gospel was? Yeah, this is interesting. And it's, it's powerful because we always read the Old Testament through the lens of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. through the lens of the gospel. And so when we read the stories of the prophets and we read the Old Testament books, it is very difficult for us to remove our understanding of what would happen in the New Testament. And you really can't understand the old unless you, re you know what those people were, their mindset. Mm -hmm. Well, in the Old Testament, many of them, most Jews did not believe in death after li or life after death. Hmm. They didn't believe that you lived afterwards, or if you did, that there would be an eternal existence of the second coming and coming back to earth. The, 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 if there was something, it was far less than what it was to be on earth. Mm -hmm. So their view of God, <coughs> excuse me, their view of God was he was there to bless them on earth. The mm -hmm. gospel in the Old Testament was a prosperity gospel. Oof. It was a gospel of how does God bless me while I w I'm on earth. Mm -hmm. How does he meet my needs? Because they needed water to survive, and water was a premium. In fact, water was considered as valuable as gold mm -hmm. in the Old Testament. And when you're there, they talk about how uh, kings would try to control the water sources because water you just there wasn't wells and faucets and city things recycling water you didn't have any of that you needed yeah. natural water sources and you needed food so droughts where did you get food there wasn't this international market mm -hmm. and so food was extremely important so they would have god but then they'd have idols because they needed a backup plan in case God didn't do it. They would go to their standing stones because it was all about, will God prosper us? So when they were given the law and why they made such a big deal, like we got to keep every letter of the law, the law became this thing to appease their God to give them rain and food. Hmm. We look at it completely different. Hmm. They weren't looking at having this relationship with God in the sense of how we look at it as an intimate uh, a father relationship or, or they weren't looking at it in that way. They were looking at it as the, the source of power. And, and we had to, we have to obey every law he gives so that he gives us water and food when we need it. And it becomes, it creates this very legalistic type of relationship with the people of Israel and God. And when Jesus comes, he's like, Oh, you have missed the point you missed the mark you've mm -hmm. sinned not because they had broken law but they had missed what the law was all yeah. about they had missed that the law wasn't there to put a noose around their neck mm -hmm. the law was there to basically like like the law of of cleaning they would bathe to just be clean why because you need to clean yourself yeah. i mean there's there's very real natural reasons for some of what the law was given for not to say you not to send you to hell yeah exactly. god didn't want it didn't give you the law to send you to hell mm -hmm. we 
we're on our way to hell mm -hmm. because of what happened in the Garden of Eden when we unplugged from the Tree of Life and we plugged into the knowledge. Way before the law, people were going to Sheol. Oh, yeah. Way before the law, they were going. To, but what we've done is saying, if you break the law, then you're going to hell. Friend, you were born. Yeah. Breaking, breaking. You were born with that sin nature, mm -hmm. so so it is. It was never the law that sent people to hell. The law was mainly there, just as the law is here in our society today, to give. This is what we agree we need to do to be able to prosper in our community. That we need to follow this law. And are there lawbreakers? Sure, there are. Yeah. And there are consequences to law breaking. Mm -hmm. That that is. That's the problem with the whole, I'm under grace, not under the law. You're under grace and under the law. Mm -hmm. You operate according to the law, but you operate with grace that gives you the ability to not only fulfill the law, but to walk in the prosperity of that. And uh, for those of you who ask, like, where is Pastor James getting this from? Where is Alex getting this from? This is not really in the Bible. We're going to take a look at that and to give you an idea and a clear perspective <coughs> of the purpose of, of the law and it's actually really beautiful it's one of my favorite parts of scripture because having a legalistic mindset this will really challenge that that religious spirit it's found in galatians 3 15 the law and the promise to give a human example brothers even with a man-made covenant no one annuls it or adds to it once it has been ratified so explain that it from being a former lawyer what does that mean well, read it again so I can, <laughs> you put uh, me on the spot. I don't know what you're... <laughs> no one annuls it or adds to it once it has been ratified. Well, you can't end it. Once it's been done, you can't end it. So you mm -hmm. can't annul it, which means, you know, if annulment, a best example of that would be marriage. You know, you get married, mm -hmm. and if you don't consummate the marriage, you can have an, you, they can annul it, act as though it never happened. Hmm. But once it's been consummated or ratified, you can't go back and act like it didn't happen. Verse 16, now the promises were made to Abraham and to his offspring. It does not say into his offsprings, referring to many, but referring to one. And to your offspring, who is Christ, this is what I mean. The law which came 430 years afterwards uh, does not annul a covenant previously ratified by God. So as to make the promise void... For if the inheritance comes by the law, it no longer comes by promise, but God gave it to Abraham by a promise. So catching up everybody right now, Yeah. what is the writer so saying? So the covenant was made. You have to go back to when the covenant was made, okay? Mm -hmm. And if you remember, God, uh, uh, Abraham uh, says the lot, hey, let's choose. We can't. We can't hang out together. You know, God doesn't really talk to Abraham from the time he gives the promise to the time that he sends Lot off. Mm -hmm. Abraham pretty much starts making decisions and eventually realizes at one point, I need to get the Lot out of my life. The yeah. moment Lot leaves him, God says, hey, Abraham, here I am. Mm -hmm. I got to go tell you. I want to show you something. And he shows him the promise. And he says, here are the stars in the sky. And then he goes to ratify it. Well, how do you ratify a covenant? Well, through a blood sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And if you read in, in Genesis, and, I, and I'm 17, 18, somewhere in there, 19, somewhere, mm -hmm. it says that Abraham would cut the sacrifice in half uh, of a, a calf or a cow or a sheep, whatever it was. And, and what it was is they would take a saw and cut the animal from the nose to the tail. So to, you had the right side of the animal and the left side of the animal would fall to the sides. And of course, this is a very bloody <laughs> thing. Okay. So blood is all over the place. We're going to get censored by PETA. Right. Sorry, <laughs> PETA. And, and so they would be laying halves open, the innards opened up. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then if you were going to make a covenant with someone, you would walk like an infinity through them. So you would hold hands, you would walk through the inner side, of, and you'd walk around in the figure eight or the infinity symbol, and you'd walk around, I think it was three times through that, and what you were doing is ratifying the covenant at that point in time. Mm -hmm. So 
what it's talking about here in, in the, the promise and the ratification of that promise God had made with Abraham was Abraham comes, God says, okay, get the sacrifice ready for this covenant. And here's the interesting thing. There was a fire pot and a lamp. Okay? It says before the covenant was being, being made, and Abraham thinks he's making the covenant with God. It says he falls in a deep sleep <clears throat> and the lamp takes his posi- takes his spot. Mm-hmm. The sun takes his spot. And we read this and we understand it as the father and the son walk through the sacrifice. Because in the sacrifice, if you break the covenant, mm. you're held responsible. They knew Abraham would never fulfill the covenant. Yeah. So they f- take the spot and the son, Jesus, walks through the covenant in Abraham's place wow. to say he mm. can't fulfill it, but I can fulfill wow. it for him. And even back then, we see the fire pot and the lamp f- doing this covenant, and he's doing it on behalf of Abraham. That's so stinking cool. I forgot about that one. It's it's pretty amazing. Like Abraham is probably one of, one of my favorites. It's so interesting because it, yeah, cha- it takes you back to like, wait, how did God start this whole relationship? It wasn't like was there law when Abraham was there? No, he was counted righteous by his belief in the promise that God had made with them. And then, yeah, and his faith in God. Yeah. Like Abraham, it's, this is the problem. We get so caught up in the law and the rules and all of that, when in reality, it's a very simple truth. Mm-hmm. God says this. God says, I want you to be my people, and, and, you, and I will be your God. I want you to be my people, and, you will, and I will be your God. If you were to ask me, what is God's actual desire in all this? that you would be his people and he would be our God, Mm -hmm. that there would be a relationship where what we have with him, that we say, I completely depend on God. I'm in relationship with God. Not, I don't drink, I don't smoke, (laughs) I don't chew, and I don't date girls to do it. I'm following the rules. Now, does that happen? Only because of my relationship with God, he changes the desires of my heart, mm-hmm. and it's out of that relationship that my decisions and desires change. Yeah. Like, they happen just mm-hmm. as an outgrowth of that. Mm-hmm. Now, so I'm not, I'm not saying, i got to be a better Christian, so tell me what the law is so I can pursue the law and do what the law says because i got to do the law because i got to prove to God that I love him because I'm doing the law. No, as I love him, I go to him, mm-hmm. and then he works the law into my heart. Mm-hmm. He writes them on my heart. Mm-hmm. And this is the explanation of the law. So we just lay, we just showed you a little bit uh, of context and gave you history and what Paul is talking about here. And then we're going to verse 19. And the question starts with, why then the law? It was added because of our transgressions until the offspring should come to whom the promise has been made. Where that saying is right here. It says, to the, the question then arises, if the law has no impact on God's plan rooted in his promise, why was the law ever given? So why even the law? Because of transgressions might mean to provide a sacrificial system to deal with temporarily with transgressions, to teach people more clearly what God requires and thereby restrain transgressions, to show that transgressions violated an explicit written law or to reveal people's sinfulness in need of a savior. Uh, continuing on, it was... Yeah, I mean, before you go on, Mm -hmm. you know, that can get a little confusing, but how do we know what is right or wrong? How do we know what is healthy or not healthy? How do we know who we are, what what will bring prosperity? Well, someone says, this is wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, we get people who give us advice all the time, and they say, listen, if you do this, this is the response you're going to get. So... It, this is, again, he's talking to those in the Old Testament that do yep. not have access to Christ. How do, why are you telling me that we're wrong? You know, what, what is it that saying, well, this is what God says is how we are to live and to walk. And mm-hmm. if you break those things, then you recognize that you need the sacrifice of Christ mm-hmm. in your life to help you fulfill the law. Mm-hmm. How we look at it is if I'm going to be like people will make this statement, I, I want to believe that Jesus is, 
is the savior of the world. But I want to get my junk in the trunk taken care of before, before. I come to him. I want to clean up before. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. Is And that's what he was saying. The promise is not something that you work for. It's something that's given. It's a gift. Yeah. The gift is God giving us the ability to live according to the things he's put in the law that have a negative effect in our life. Mm -hmm. Remember, the law was given for us. Yep. It's a blessing to mm -hmm. us not a curse to us. Mm -hmm. It becomes a curse when you feel you have to live by it in order to appease a God mm -hmm. who loves you. Exactly. Um, it's like the same way, like my, my parents will give me rules, <coughs> and I always say this a lot because I was very stubborn and I didn't listen to a lot, a lot of the rules they gave me, but even how annoying I was, that didn't change my parents' love for me. Now that's a little bit different from our relationship with God, uh, but in the same way, like how we view the law, like I, I, in no, no point, my, my relationship was healthy enough where I didn't think that, wow, if I vacuum the floor, my parents are going to love me. But if I don't, I might be kicked out of the house. Like, no, they, they love me regardless of if, and what yet, I do. And yet that's what a lot of people think even today. If, yeah. if they don't wash their hands in a certain way or do ritual bathings, you know, that somehow God, mm -hmm. you know, and, but th so why the sacrifices? Yeah. Why the sacrifice? The sacrifices were a physical act that mm -hmm. caused man to come to where they said, we recognize that we cannot change our actions. So even in the Old Testament, the sacrifice was supposed to be this thing that people did to say, okay, God, uh, we recognize we need a sacrifice and it was a prophetic sacrifice, whether they knew it or not, that that sacrifice was the sacrifice of a lamb for the forgiveness of their sins, mm -hmm. was a prophetic thing to take part in the sacrifice of Christ to come. Mm -hmm. We don't sacrifice lambs today because the lamb mm -hmm. has been already sacrificed mm -hmm. for us. One so, sacrifice. yes, we live in the realm of grace yeah but even in the realm of grace there are laws that we live to because of grace mm -hmm. you know the bible said jesus came and he says you say that if you uh, commit adultery you're an adulterer i say even if you look at a woman with lustful eyes you're an adulterer grace does not lessen the law mm -hmm. it grace actually uh, increased the expectation of it mm -hmm. and going on it says until the offspring should come to whom the promise had been made and it was put in place through angels by an intermediary now an intermediary implies more than one but god is one is the law then contrary to the promises of god certainly not for if a law had been given that could give life then righteousness would indeed be by the law but scripture imprisoned everything under sin so that the promise uh, by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. Now, before faith came, we were held captive under the law, imprisoned until the coming faith would be revealed. So then the law was our guardian until Christ came in order that we might be justified through faith. And other translations talk about that our guardian, just like how we're raised by our parents, mm -hmm. and then there's independence that happen until we can operate on our own. The law... Uh, was similar to that, to put us in the the way of Christ. But now that faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian. For in Christ Jesus, you are all sons of God through faith. For as many of you were baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male and female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring. <coughs> Heirs according to promise. Yep. So very practically, simply yeah. put, how are you saved? Through the gift of, through the, gift of the sacrifice of Christ. Mm -hmm. Law doesn't determine that. Mm -hmm. your, you believe in your heart, you confess with your mouth, <clears throat> you shall be saved. <clears throat> Why the law? We have a place in heaven, no matter whether you break the law or not, when you come into relationship with Christ, whether you break the law or not, 
You have a relationship with Christ, whether you break the law or not. You have a relationship. I'm saying this many times because I don't want it mistaken. We're saved because Christ gave us away and he gave us his righteousness. Mm -hmm. Okay? But the law, mm -hmm. when it works for you as a believer in Christ, you now look at the law as not the thing that separates you from God. You look at as the law as... Th that which God gave us, and if it uh, where it applies in our life, where it brings, it can bring um, prosperity in our life when we follow law. Like you'll prosper if you don't kill people. Yeah. You'll prosper if you don't cheat on your wife. You're uh, gonna prosper if you don't lie. You're gonna prosper you're if you're glutton, not coveting. You know. You'll prosper if you're not a glutton. You'll pro that, I mean. There, there are things if you, you say, well, I'm saved even though I do those things. Sure, sure. Because of the sacrifice of Christ, he paid for that. But there's there's another level here of on earth. And, and we, that relationship with Christ causes us to literally fulfill the law. You know, it just popped into my brain. Uh, it was the story of the rich, the rich man that came mm -hmm. to Jesus. And he comes to Jesus. And what does he say? He says that. You know, I fulfilled the law like I, you know, he was a righteous man. He's right. going down the list of everything he did. And I've always wondered why Jesus asked him this question, because this, this, this command that Jesus gave wasn't to all of us, but he said it to him because he claimed to have the whole law down. And God just put this in my brain like right now. So if it's heretical, like you'll let me know. Sure. Uh, but the funny thing is, what, what are the two laws summed up as? Love your God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. Love your neighbor as yourself, right? Right. Jesus, when he showed up on the scene, was very different. Came into a really different culture and like what we talked about, how the Israelites thought they could reach God. So this rich man comes to Jesus and uh, says, hey, like I've done all these things wants to follow him and what does jesus tell him sell everything you have give it to the poor mm -hmm. and what did he do he couldn't do it yeah there was something that took the place of god in his in his heart jesus was very smart obviously and knowing that and saw that and told him to sell everything and to follow him is this people will be like, so are we all supposed to just be broke? No, there was something that he worshiped and it wasn't God. And so he was a breaker of that. I, was, I think even, even in that verse, people miss, you know, what you were just supposed to be broke. No, I think he was no. bringing to the people to that point of empty yourself exactly. of everything in this world and live eternally. Exactly. Some believe that it was that rich young ruler that gave Jesus the tomb, hmm. that it was Joseph of Arimathea. Yeah. that gave the tomb to Jesus because it, when it talks about a wealthy young man who gave the tomb, Joseph of Arimathea, that maybe in that moment he couldn't do it, but later after thinking about it, he came to the realization mm -hmm. that Jesus was worth mm -hmm. selling everything for. That's interesting. I just thought that was, because it's funny, it's like you think of those two simple commands, love your God with all your heart, soul, strength, mind. If you really did, if you really loved God like that, what would that look like for the things we so closely hang on to in our lives? And I wonder if that's that had to do with Jesus asking him that. Yeah. And I think a lot of people, when the question <clears throat> is, again, what can't I do rather than like if you're yeah. so obsessed with God, everything changes. Just like you're not talking about what you can't. Yeah, do. Yeah, exactly. You do if you have an understanding of grace. Mm -hmm. You you don't you don't sit there and go, what can't I do? You just yeah. run after God. You're yeah. like sold out to Him. And and do you do? You're not living with this idea of of like I'm gonna break the. I, I, yeah. the and if I'm gonna be safe. But I do look at it and say, okay, this isn't going to go well for me. So, I, it, I mean, some of that stuff, he just writes in your heart, you mm -hmm. just know. Mm -hmm. But there's this world, I think, when people start saying, what can I get away with doing? I don't know that there's a relationship with God. No. I, and they say, well, I'm under grace. 
I don't know that you are under mm -hmm. grace because of the perspective of where you're coming from. It wasn't just that. When Jesus with, was, with, was with Zacchaeus, mm -hmm. and, you know, Zacchaeus was, we little man, we little oh, man was he, tree. climbed up in a sycamore tree. He says, I'm going to your house for tea. Jesus goes to, I don't know if he said that, but mm -hmm. Jesus goes to his home. Right. He had been ripping, he was a tax collector. He'd been ripping people off. Mm -hmm. He spends an afternoon with Jesus, and what does it say later? That he comes back and gives back four times what he had stolen. Yeah. He, something happened in that afternoon with Jesus that completely changed the way he lived his life afterwards. Mm -hmm. It wasn't so he'd follow the law and God took, he had a great teaching on the law. He met Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mary of Magdalene, who, who is probably a prostitute beforehand, um, meets Jesus, becomes a follower of Christ, and then takes a year's salary and then anoints his body before he's dead, mm -hmm. not knowing that she was anointing his body, dumps a whole bottle of perfume, a year's wage on him. Why, what caused her to do that? What caused um, the people to give their life, to be martyred for Jesus if he wasn't resurrected? Mm -hmm. And we believe he was resurrected. And they died for this this man named Jesus, all yeah. of the disciples except for John, were martyrs. Yeah. What caused them? What changed their life? It wasn't living for the law. Mm -hmm. It wasn't about the law. And I think we got to put the law in perspective. One, that we're not lawless. Mm -hmm. We're not a lawless people. And when you make the statement, I'm under grace, not under the law, what you're essentially saying is I'm lawless. Yeah. That I, that no, no, that's not true. Mm -hmm. We're under grace enabled by the Holy Spirit to live with the law, yes, to live in a why, life exactly. in, 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 in accordance with it because it doesn't condemn us. I'm not mm -hmm. ashamed when I break it because mm -hmm. grace has given me the ability to move past that. It's given me the mercy to move past it because Christ took it all in my future sins. And, and it, you know, we just get caught up into it and it becomes so confusing and we overthink it. And that's exactly what the enemy wants to do. Yeah. The law is not evil in itself, right. and that's what the Bible talks about. But sin that lives within us, the invisible sin that we don't see right. when the law right. was right. there, sin sought to take advantage of us yeah, and to bring about death in rebellion to the law that had been set in place. Isn't that interesting? Sin is referred to like a living organism. Like we talked about that with Cain, that like just do the right things Cain, and you'll be good, but if you don't, sin is waiting at the door. It's crouching at the door, and it desires to have you. Yeah, it's like tithing, for instance. Yeah. Tithing, which was way before the law, mm -hmm. was a principle, and I, it's a creational principle. But people say, I'm yeah. not under the law, I'm under grace, right, and why they don't tithe. That's fine. You can do that, but you're not going to see the blessing. Yeah. Because you're under grace, if you don't live according to the creational law of tithe, you're not going to see the blessing of it. And people are like, well, I don't believe there is. Well, if you've not tithed, you wouldn't know. Exactly. But there are many people who do tithe that have seen the blessing of tithing and experienced it in their life and preach it all the time because mm -hmm. they lived when they didn't and then they lived what they did and they see the difference between it. They're not under the law, but because they live according to it, they, they're able to, they make decisions knowing I'm I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. Thank not because I lived by according to law, but because of grace. But I've also understand that there's blessing in what God gave mankind. Mm -hmm. um, and there's the the cleansing, and then there's the thou shalt not kills. Mm -hmm. And and is there? And it's interesting. Those same people that say I don't live under law, do do you not agree with the Ten Commandments? Yeah. <laughs> do you not agree with? The law, like what law of God do you think is bad for you? Mm -hmm. And, and <clears throat> we talked about this where a person says, well, I'm under grace. I don't need to go to church. Mm -hmm. How many people do you know that don't go to church that are succeeding in their walk with Christ? Yeah. Not many. In fact, if they're being honest, very few of them and, and church can appear, I know in many different ways, uh, mm -hmm. but God, Christ is the one who created the church. Yeah. Christ established the church. Right. I didn't establish the church. Christ did. Mm -hmm. And it's not a matter, well, I've been in bad church situations. Well, find a good one. Yeah. You've been in a lot of bad restaurants. You didn't yeah. stop searching for good ones. Yeah. You find a place where you get with a group of brothers and sisters in Christ 
that cause you to grow, that you can be discipled and you can grow in, and 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 then this becomes more life giving. Yeah, I think people uh, and we're kind of coming to a close. Um, when people, I've heard it said that the way people look at God is like Jesus is the one that just came and rescued with us and is like the, oh, like my dad's going to be really angry, like, but it's okay. I'm going to go and like sneakily like provide a way out. And it's like, a, you ever seen like those shows like where there's the good cop and the bad cop yeah, right. technique where God comes in. He's like, these people stink. I hate their guts. Oh, I just can't like, and, and he's saying all these threats and you're like sitting there like under the the light yeah. being like interrogated and you're like in fear of, of of god and then he goes out of the room and then jesus comes in he's like i'm so sorry like uh do you need a drink or anything like should yeah. i go get you a water right. can i get and then and then the, the 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 person being interrogated is like crying it's like he's so scary like i just <laughs> uh, and they think that's how god operates but if you look like what we talked about in the very beginning this promise that was established. And even before that, when we walked with God and our true purpose was to have a relationship with him, why would he create us if he didn't want, you know, the goal, if he just wanted us to be like an animal or anything, yeah, he would have not is, given us his own spirit to be able to commune with us. Yeah. I mean, if God is trying to keep you out of his clean heaven, yeah, why would he send his son to die on a cross? Exactly. Why would he go lower than the angels mm -hmm. to go die in the God? For God so loved the world. Mm -hmm. That's the God we serve. For God so loved the world. Mm -hmm. uh, he's not this vindictive God. He's created us. Yeah. God, if he's the creator, and I believe he is, mm -hmm. created you and I, everyone yeah. that is listening, he created you. Mm -hmm. For you to enjoy him and for him to enjoy you. Yeah. We think when we break the law that we're somehow making him not enjoy us. Yeah. His love does not decrease based on whether you broke the law or not. But if you break the law, it's going to hurt you. Yeah. It's going to have a negative effect on your life. If you kill somebody, you're hurting that person you killed and everyone around them. And you're also hurting the people around you. Mm -hmm. If you lie, you're hurting people. You're hurting mm -hmm. the environment, and it's going to have a negative effect on you. God says, here's my law to help you prosper. Remember, it was given during the time, and there was this, they, were, they didn't even believe in eternal, yeah. that, there, that there is going to be an existence. This is going to help you with what? If you're a nation coming out of Egypt, and you don't know all the scientific studies of being clean and washing your hands, and God says, hey, by the way, make sure you tell everybody you need to do this and you need to do it this many days. And pretty soon the people take it and say, if you're going to please God, you need to wash your hands this many days. And, you need to, and God's got to be sitting there going, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I can't even talk because if I tell them to do like something the in this situation, they're mm -hmm. going to turn it into a law. And they're going to say, if you don't live by this washing and if you don't do it in this, this way, you're going to go to hell because you yeah. didn't do it exactly the way I wanted. Mm -hmm. and, and we understand that even in we lose our cool or we get upset that we can't do. So the sacrifice is saying, God, we're not even able to live by the laws that you've given us. Mm -hmm. So we need a sacrifice yeah. to help us. And that sacrifice for us was Christ. Mm -hmm. And when he came, he became the sacrifice. Jesus even said, I didn't come to a body abolish it, mm -hmm. but to fulfill mm -hmm. it for you. So it no longer sends you to hell or however you want to, it, it's fulfilled, yeah. but it's still something that can be a blessing in your life. If mm -hmm. you handle it with the right hands, he died so that we wouldn't be slaves and we could become sons. That in Romans, it talks about that the spirit that he's given us is not a fear yeah, or, or slavery, slavery. Yeah. but adoption that we cry, Abba, Father. Like, it, th there was a purpose to this. We were slaves to the law. And, and people say, well, I don't, you know, I don't know how to follow. I think the best thing, if you want to know the character of God, she, like I say, people, 
God makes this very easy. He's not trying to hide. In Romans 1, it said, I've made it clear to men. I've made it plain to them through creation. In Acts, uh, it talks about the Roman centurion, how he was a God-fearing man, him and his family, and gave alms, wasn't a Christian, but followed Jewish custom. An angel was sent to him to send for Simon Peter. And Simon Peter said, surely I know that God shows no favoritism to anyone who fears God that God is not trying to make it hard to find. He actually makes it really simple to the point where he's like, if you've seen me, you've seen my father. Yeah. No, it's true. It's the, You know, when you were talking, think of this, Alex. Think of it this way. The person who says, all you Christians, you got all your rules and laws and all those things you think you should follow to have to... To, to serve your God that gets angry with you when yeah. you do those things he tells you not to do and he gets angry with you and you're following this magic thing in the sky. Okay, for that person that's listening right now, let me ask you this question. Which one of the laws that you say you know, if it was done against you, <laughs> would you have a problem with? Hmm. So if I lied to you, are you like, why do we got a problem with you lying to me? If I kill you, are you sitting there going, so God has told me that I should honor these laws, right? Which one of those laws are you okay with for me doing to you? Hmm. You say, well, I shouldn't be condemned for lying to people or killing people or, or cheating on your wife or uh, coveting or all of those things. That, that shouldn't be a problem. Yeah. See, that's the problem. We love to isolate our arguments and they make no sense. Mm -hmm. They make no sense. God was like, if you're going to get along with people, these are the laws you need to follow. Exactly. And he, and he says, I exist mm -hmm. and I am your God. Mm -hmm. And this is how we exist mm -hmm. in relationship. I'm going to tell us how we can have a good relationship. Mm -hmm. So don't put any other gods before us. Mm -hmm. Let me be the God and I'll provide for you and yeah. you will be more provided for than anyone else. You mm -hmm. won't ever have to worry. You will never starve. You will never beg for bread, it says. Yeah. The point is not to like, and this is the people, again, the heart of a, uh, of a person that's got a rocky relationship with God is that he died so then I could continue to live in my sin. But we have moved out of our sin sovereign nation that we that's once right. lived in to be dead to ourselves and alive in Christ. That when you were baptized in his death, you were raised to life and made alive in him. That it talks about your old life it, multiple times in the Bible. It talks about death, death, death. You've died to yourself. Those who love their life will lose it, but those who lose it for my sake will find it. You've been baptized into his death. You're made new, a new creation, all these different things. But we think, so for some reason, after God goes through all this trouble to... to kill sin within himself and leave it on a cross, then we want to go grave robbing for some reason and we just don't get the point. It's like, no, his grace is that we could pursue him, that, that we wouldn't be caught up in dealing with our vices and the things yeah. that hinder us from our relationship with God. But all of it can be summed up with what we talked about earlier. Love your God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. Very, very simple. Very simple. And Grace did not, grace did not set you free to live a lawless life. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's just not what it is. No. That why would God give us a law and say this is for your best interest, and then send His Son to die on a cross for you not to live by for your best interest? <laughs> it, it, there's no logic in it. Yeah. So you had asked me before. You'd said you know there's somebody who's in homosexuality. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said he was a Christian. You said, is that even possible for him to be a Christian? Absolutely. Hmm. Absolutely. But does it mean he's going to be blessed by the decision he made if it's against what God says is his plan and order and law of creation? No. Hmm. No. God does not bless lawless behavior. Mm -hmm. Period. Yeah. Nowhere in the Bible will you see it say God blesses lawless behavior, but it also says grace is sufficient yeah. to save our soul for eternity. Mm -hmm. So it's it's pretty simple. God, it's I think we overthink it. <coughs> Excuse mm -hmm. me, I think we overthink it. Uh, but God, you know, God has to keep it simple 
so that the simplest person on the planet understands it. Yeah. It can't be over anyone's head. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of men like in the in Jewish the Jewish that took what God said and they overthought it and they put nooses and that's what Jesus says you put nooses on their necks, you create laws. You take in what God said and then created laws out of it and put nooses around people's necks. Mm -hmm. And that's what's happened. What we're telling you today if you're listening is the law isn't to be a noose around your neck. You say, well, I'm struggling to, you know, really follow some of the laws that God gives. That's okay. You know, God wants you. He loves you. He's given you grace and ability. You don't have to worry about eternity. But he also will give you the ability to do what you couldn't do in your flesh in honoring yeah. the law. Because he wants you to live a lawful life, a law-abiding life, so that you can experience the blessing of that. Mm -hmm. But you also don't live in guilt and shame and condemnation when you break that. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean the consequences won't come, because there are consequences that often come. And I'll be honest with you, God's mercy is incredible. There are many times where I've broken the law and God has given me mercy. Isn't that true? You, you're speeding down the road and some cop pulls you over and says, you know, you've been speeding, but he had mercy on you and he, and he said, just uh, don't do it anymore. And you go, okay. And you, you, God gives us mercy. But you have to understand that mercy is great and it lets us free and walk free. But if what we're doing is hurting us and other people around us, there's a point where God says, my mercy is for you is to let you walk through mm -hmm. the consequence. So there are many times you're going to experience the mercy when you break the law. And you, don't, you can live with peace, knowing God's uh, sacrifice, the sacrifice of Christ was enough. But you have to also understand the law is necessary. I would hate for creation to say, I'm under grace, not under the law. Our world would fall apart. Exactly. Because all of the natural laws, the laws of nature, hold things in order. When those laws change, everything goes crazy and chaotic. And the reason you feel the uncertainty, the sense of, of like in our society, that people will say you just feel this uncertain, this unsettledness, this craziness all around it. The reason you feel that is because of lawlessness. Mm -hmm. Because people have shunned the laws uh, of even our land. And, and when we don't have laws, when a land doesn't have laws, then people start to fear, they get uncertain and unsettled. And, and, and as much as, whether you like it or not, we like our laws. Yep. It keeps order mm -hmm. and structure. So that's all we got for you today. If you want to read more about this, you can read it yourself again in, in Galatians 3, 15, <coughs> Uh, through 29 and you'll get to read about the law and the promise really all of Galatians is great uh, and you'll learn a lot about grace uh, faith uh, that 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 saves us you'll learn about Abraham and the original promise given to the Jews uh, you'll learn about all that and I think it's it's really great uh, and bringing perspective and your love, it brings your love for Christ for to a whole new meaning because I think a lot of us just have it on our necklace and we don't truly understand the purpose of Christ's coming. And if we do, how does that practically look for our lives? So we love you guys. We hope that you got something from this and we'd love to hear uh, if, if you did, if you did take something away from this, we always love hearing the testimonies and, and also any questions that you have. So if you want to reach out, uh, you can email me at pastor Alex at Bethel's rock.org. You can DM us, uh, whatever, uh, or you can just comment on this video, but we love you guys. And there, there, uh, there's one more thing. Oh. If you're watching, this is pretty important. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to talk about karma and we're going to talk about the demonic realm and all of that in coming podcasts. Mm -hmm. But this, this probably ranks right up there. Um, you all heard about Alex's mouth earlier t today. Um, you know, he won't be able to eat solid foods for, uh -huh. uh, so he'll be drinking Thanksgiving through a straw mm -hmm. or eating Thanksgiving through a straw. So if you have great recipes that can be blended, yes. uh, please send those as well so that he's able to enjoy uh, meals. I'm sure that'll get old after Ooh. one week. 
and maybe you can help him out and and uh, send in your favorite blended meal yes for please him. that would be that would also be amazing so you can just hit my email with that because i'm really hungry and all these foods do not sound very appetizing <laughs>